Hey guys, welcome to a new Blender tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to make this cool sci-fi looping animation in Blender. And the final result will be something like this. Again, if you want to download all the project files, you can do so on my Patreon. So I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested. Okay, so let's start making this. First, I'm going to select the cube and the lamp and we are going to delete them. Now we are going to start with the circle. Just increase the circle vertices to 64 to get that smooth edge. We are going to go in the edit mode by pressing our tab key. We are going to select that edge loop and we are going to extrude it on the Z axis. So you can tap your E key to extrude it. After the extrusion is done, we are going to add a loop cut and you can add as many loop cuts as you like, but I'm going to add just one. So just add that loop cut there and just scale it on each axis. Okay, so now we have something that looks like a ring. Again, I'm going to give it the smooth shading. So W and shade smooth. Under the normal, turn on auto smooth. That gives you a better looking result. We need to give it some thickness. So again, under the modifiers tab, we are going to add a solidify modifier to this. After the solidify modifier, I'm going to give it a bevel. So we can achieve that by adding a bevel modifier. In the limit method, just select the angle. And as you can see, we have that cool edge bevel right there. And this looks really cool. So after the bevel, we are going to add one more thing and that is the subdivision surface. So now we have a smooth ring that looks quite good. I'm going to collapse all the modifiers. Now we are going to duplicate this. So shift D duplicate that and rotate it on the Y axis. Shift D again, duplicate that. Rotate it on the X axis now. So just rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees. As you can see, now we have something that looks like a gyroscope. Now the base gyroscope is done, so I'm going to add one more thing, shift A, and we are going to add an icosphere. And again, increase the subdivisions of the icosphere. Now, after you have made something like this, before animating this, we need to apply all the transforms. So this is a really important step. And if you miss this, you will not be able to animate this and you will get a lot of animation glitches. Select each object and you can press Ctrl A and we need to apply all the transforms. So just apply all the transforms. After applying the transform, we need to also set the origin to the geometry. So you can achieve this by going in the object panel under the set origin. There are a lot of options. We need the origin to geometry. So first we need to uh, reset all the transforms by Ctrl A and then we need to apply the origin to the geometry. So these two steps are really important. So do this with uh, each and every object. So after you have done that, after you have uh, reset all the rotations and the transforms, you can easily animate this. Now it's time to animate this. So I'm going to change my end frames to 120. Our animation will be 120 frames long. So go to the first frame, select the outer ring and we are going to start animating this. So you can press your I key and you can insert a rotation keyframe. So now, as you can see, we have a yellow dot on the first frame. So that means our keyframe is successful. Now go to frame 30, rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degrees and add a rotation keyframe. You have to rotate this object by increments of 90 degrees and you have to add a keyframe after each 30 frames. So just do that. So the outer ring will rotate 90 degrees on the Z axis. So as you can see, we have a smooth rotation. And this will be an infinitely looping animation. So we are going to do that in a second. But first, let's animate the inner rings. So just hide the outer ring because the animation is done. Select that inner ring and add a rotation keyframe. Go to frame 30. And we are going to rotate this on the X axis and then add a keyframe. So similar steps, just we are rotating this on the X axis. So now we have this ring that rotates on the X axis. Now we are going to hide it because we are done animating that and it's time to animate the last inner ring. 
So select it and add a keyframe, go to frame 30 and we are going to rotate this around the Y axis. And again, similar steps to follow each 30 frames, rotate it and add a keyframe. So on frame 90, frame 120, hit I and add a rotation keyframe. If you play all the animations together, you get a really cool movement and this looks really quite cool. Now for this tutorial, I'm using basic objects. Like I've literally modeled these rings, but you can use your own sci-fi uh, models and objects, and you can really achieve some great results by using these simple techniques. So as you can see, this really creates that illusion of something complex, but as you can see, it is not that complex. Now it's time to make the animation a looping animation. At the moment, this is not a looping animation. You will see some stutter at the end frame. So to remove that uh, stutter at the end frame, what we do is select all the frames. Now you can do this in many ways. Either you can box select this. So you can press your B key and you can box select all these frames. So if the frames are yellow in color, that means these keyframes are selected. So just select them. And after you have selected all these keyframes, you can press your V key. And by the V key, we can change the interpolation uh, of this animation. So there are a lot of modes that Blender provides, but for creating a looping animation, we need to select the vector option and do this uh, for all the rings. So select all these frames vector. You can also tap your A key twice to select these frames. After adding the vector interpolation to all these animations, as you can see, you can't really tell the difference between the end frame and the start frame. So this is one infinitely looping animation. Now I'm going to go in my render view. And as you can see, there are no materials applied. There is no lighting. So we are going to light the scene by adding a HDRI and I'm going to use uh, the HDRI that comes with Blender. So I'm going to use the studio HDRI and you can find this HDRI in the Blender folder where you have installed Blender. In the render panel, we are also going to turn on the transparent setting and we are going to turn on all those filters. So just turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections and that will give us a very realistic look. Okay, now we are done with the lighting and we are going to go in the shader editor and we are going to work on some materials, select the ring and add a new material. You can rename this material to whatever you like. So the way that you apply this material is select the object and then select the material in the material slot. So now when you have applied the ring material to all of them, shift D duplicate the principal shader and we are going to give it a metallic material. So just turn the metallic to one, turn on the specularity to one. And in one principal shader, we are going to change the color to a dark gray color. And we are going to mix these two shaders by using a noise texture. So the noise texture will control the factor. So we'll also need a color ramp for that. So add a color ramp too. And we are going to need a mix shader as well. So just mix these two shaders. And also there is one important thing that you need to note the order of these principal shaders matter. So you can switch them if you want to invert a result. So now, as you can see, I'm just playing with those colors right there. And by using the noise texture, we get that brushed metallic look. So that looks really quite cool. Now I'm going to select the ball and add a new material to that. Now you could add the same material to the ball as well, but I'm going to add a new material to this. Again, it will be a metallic material and maybe change the color to blue. That looks cool. And once you play your animation, as you can see, this looks really quite cool. Now again, these were the basics. So you can take this and you can use your own uh, stuff and you can make many more things with this. Now there's one more important thing that you need to know. Uh, we'll go back in the object view and we are going to go shift A. We are going to add an empty mesh. So we are going to add a circle. And we are going to select all these rings. So shift select them and select the circle at last. Press control P and parent it to object. So now we have parented these rings to the circle empty circle. So now essentially what will happen is you will really get a lot of control over how this object rotates. So the child object, these rings will rotate in a relative way to the parent object that is an empty object. And if you have multiple objects, you can really give it that randomization and rotation and the positioning. So you can really create that variation. In the final render, I also added a background plane. So that is just a plane scaled up. 
and it has a basic principal shader and i also added a point lamp and the point lamp really interacts with our objects in real time so that looks really quite cool and yeah that's it guys so that was how i made this and if you like this video leave a like down below it helps a lot again check out my patreon page and subscribe to the channel it really helps a lot and yeah that's it i'll see you in the next video